most non-deterministic .NET tests that I have seen during my career were somehow related to date time. And I bet that you have seen exactly the same. And that's why in this video, I will show you an amazing feature that is coming in .NET 8 that will finally, and let me say this again, finally will address this issue. I have here an example to show you the problem that we used to have battles with it. This method has a problem that likely you already noticed it. We have here this date time that is calling the UTC and out. And if you pay attention to what the method does, it's basically applying a discount if it's a workday. So on the weekends, full price, on weekdays, 10% discount. And this is perfectly fine until the moment that you have to test it. So imagine that that class has no tests and as a good citizen, you need to change something like the percentage that will be the discount for the weekdays and so you implement the test to weeklies. You implement this test and everything seems fine. Test is green, everything is perfect until the day that for some reason the tests run on the weekend. Once that day comes, that test will fail. Why? Because on that day, the datetime.utc.now will give you either a Saturday or a Sunday. And by the way, this problem applies either to date time or date time offset. So you bring two tests into the mix, one for the weekends and one for the workdays. However, you still have a problem. One of them will work on the weekdays and the other one only on the weekends. You will never see both of them green at the same time. And you need to address this issue because those tests are non-deterministic. That is one of the valuable properties of a good test. I find interesting that capability of tests teach us to put unstable dependencies behind an interface. However, date time is a tricky scenario. I see date time as a kind of a hidden art dependency on your machine that seems so natural to use the way that is embedded in the type system of .NET, that it's easy to understand why in the beginning most of us fail addressing that dependency until the moment that we suffer with it. And that's why it is a common mistake. The solution is simple and is basically the same that you do with every single unstable dependency that you have for your tests. Things like a database, for example, or a given API. You put them behind an interface. So let's do the same to the data. My common practice was to create an interface with the name iDateTimeProvider. And the interface can be something as simple as this. Just one or two methods to return, for example, the UTC now, the, the now, whatever you want. And the implementation also pretty simple, just implement that interface and then on that method return the datetime offset.utc now. I'm using here datetime offset, I could be using the datetime itself. Now what I would do next is to either receive that interface through the method or through the constructor. So I can create a field for example and initialize it through the constructor. So now every single time that I need to access the, to the UTC now, I can use exactly that and call the method get UTC now. Done, and obviously my tests are failing now because they can't compile. So what would I do now? I could, for example, create my own test level for that interface. I can also use a library like mock or and substitute to do it. Let's use mock since it's the one that most people use. So I create my mock and provide it to the constructor. So now the only thing that I need to do is to define what that get UTC now method should do. And I can do it by invoking the method setup from mock and then saying that for the get UTC now, I will now specify the return value. And since this is the test for the weekend, I will provide a date time from a weekend, a day that I know that is either a Saturday or a Sunday. And I will do exactly the opposite to the other method. So just to be clear, the only difference between those two configurations on mock is that on one, I'm providing a weekend day and on the other one, I'm providing a work day. And if we run those tests now, we'll get both of them as green. This is the approach that most of us used to take to address this issue, either by using something like this, or for example, you would adopt something like NodaTime that has also this practice in place. The names would change slightly, but in the essence, basically this. Even Microsoft has a documentation page for such a long time explaining how to address this issue. And now finally, Microsoft is bringing a new feature to address this issue as part of .NET 8. The name of the feature, time abstraction. And the goal is to make testing your time-based logic so much more straightforward. So I roll back all the source code that you have been working on. 
And now let's do exactly the same thing that we have been doing manually with .NET 8. By the way, I am using here the preview 6, and if you want to have access to all the source code that we'll be using here, you can do it as a patron. Okay, so with the new .NET 8, if you go to system. you will find there a time provider. This time provider has access to a, a kind of a singleton that is the system. The system will give you access to things like the UTC time and also to the local time. And besides that, the feature brings some things around timers that, by the way, if you want to see how that relates to testing, please let me know in the comments and I will make sure that I have a video on it. Simply by using this get UTC now, I could just grab this thing and replace it right here. But now I'm exactly at the same point that I was moments ago. My tests will still fail. One of them will go through, the other one will fail depending on the day of the week. However, if we over on this system, you will see that it is returning a time provider. And if we go to time provider, we can see that it is an abstract class. What does that mean? It means that now we can mock it. So instead of implementing our own interface, let's go here, introduce a new field, initialize it through the constructor. And now instead of accessing to the time provider dot system, we use the one that came through the constructor and most of the work is done. So now, the same way that moments ago, our tests were complaining when we introduced that interface, now they are complaining because we need to provide the time provider. And now can we address that? Obviously, I can still use mock and create my own implementation of that abstract class. However, Microsoft introduced a new package that is useful for testing this type of scenarios. The name is timeprovider.testing. Let's install it. And now instead of using mock, we'll basically use this package that we just installed. And now we use something that comes inside of that package that is the fake time provider. And before we move on, let me just address one thing. I don't love this time provider name. I would prefer the date time provider as I was used to do it. However, there's such a long thread on GitHub on this naming thing regarding this feature that is too hard to explain, to be honest. So let's keep going. Now that I have my fake time provider, let's just go here and send it through and do the same to the other one. And now will we make this thing work one for the weekend and one for the weekday. Kind of the same way that we have done through the mock, but the fake time provider as a constructor that receives a date time offset. So we can go here and say new date time and provide the date of a weekend. Apply the same to the weekday and run the tests. And now we have both of them going through. Now you might be asking, how is it better than having my own interfaces as I was used to do? And likely it's not. For most of the use cases that you have been using an interface to hide the date time or date time offset, likely this change will not pay off. However, this will be less code to maintain. But better than that is that if most of us start using it, eventually this will become the conventional way of doing it. But for that to happen, it depends on us. We need to start adopting these things. I'm excited with the feature and I will be using it for sure. And since we are talking about date time, do you know the difference between date time and date time offset? If not, or if you feel confused, likely you won't watch this video right here.